kind of like a sequel to when we made this pattern and you can see there's a neckband on here okay and when I was making the pattern I was trying to follow along with the instructions that came with the pattern because I was figuring if someone else was going to make it that was the instructions they were going to be trying to follow and it was very frustrating if you watch the video you know I it was frustrating, but I powered my way through it, got it done. But since then, I've read a lot in the comments that a lot of other people are really having trouble with that neckband. And I think that there is a better way to do it than what the instructions say. Now, I suppose I should have done my version of it at that point, but honestly, by the time I got through it, I was so sick of that neckband, I didn't want to look at it again. I just wanted to finish the dress. But enough time has passed and I'm ready to address this issue again. So the very first thing that I would do differently is I would use a much lighter weight interfacing. Um, you're going to have so many layers of things going on right here. And having all that extra thickness just did not help at all. So this is what I am choosing to use. And it is very lightweight. Okay. See if you can see that. It's actually one of the least expensive Pelon ones. See, it's 99 cents a yard, but it's super lightweight. But what it's going to do is give you enough uh, stability. I fused it to the little facing piece here of my sample. It's going to give you enough stability um, to do what an interfacing is supposed to do, but it's not going to give you all that thickness that when you have like 10 or 15 layers of fabric together, you're not going to have to deal with. So, the other thing that has to do with interfacing, I know in this video, um, when I was dealing with that neckband, I was showing you how to uh, cut the uh, interfacing, a separate interfacing pattern so you don't have any in the seam allowance, which is still a good thing to do, especially if you're using a medium weight or a thicker weight uh, interfacing that's going to have a lot of bulk. I'm going to not do that this time, surprisingly, I know, because I am using such a thin interfacing, I'm thinking that um, I'll be able to make this easier without having to, to do that. But if you're choosing to use a thicker interfacing in your neckband and in your facing, yeah, it would still be a very good idea to cut that extra bulk out of it by doing the um, wax paper template thing that I showed in the first video. So, with that, um, I'm just going to go ahead, I've got just the very top of my front pieces. I'm going to go ahead and assemble my front, my front facing here and my back so it's, and uh, join it up at the shoulders so that we'll have the same neckline on this dress where the neckband is supposed to go and we'll just take it from there. So let me go put my upper bodice together and I'll be right back. All right, so before I sew them together, here's my facing piece here. Um, these are my fronts, I got my back over here. What we need to make sure we do is reinforce this uh, neck edge where the band's gonna be sewn to so it doesn't get out of shape because it is on a bias. Now, one of the things that drove me nuts is I stay stitched it and it's very difficult to get that stay stitching not to show when you're sewing a very small seam allowance of something that really wants to get out of shape. So the first thing I'm going to do different is use my woven stay tape. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fuse that all the way around my neck edge. And um, if I just put it at the, line it up so the edge of my tape is at the edge of my garment, 
I'll be able to catch that stitch because we're supposed to be using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And this is flat, you know, it's woven, it's not on, it's not on a bias, it's on a straight, and that's so it's not going to stretch. So when I need to make a curve, I just kind of curve it, there'll be a little bit of a pleat, and that's okay. It doesn't bother me, so there's like tiny little pleats when you press it down, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and snip it at this point here. So now this is reinforced and I don't have to worry about my stay stitches poking out and showing on the front. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this tape also on here and on the neckline in the back right here. Okay, so I have my little stay stitching on there. I have sewn my back to my front and just pressed these open. And um, now I'm ready to work on this band a little bit. So the first thing I'm doing is make sure you, there's two little notches here right outside the center back right there there you go right there make sure you have those cut um, I have a little mark there with my pen but I know as soon as I iron it that marks gonna disappear so that's why I clip it too so what we're gonna do is so the inside all the way around, okay? But what it's asking for is a 3 8 inch seam allowance around here. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a quarter inch. You know, an extra eighth of an inch isn't going to kill me um, around my neck, but I can. I want a smaller seam allowance here. It's going to make it easier to maneuver, and that way I can make sure I get this little point it's easy for this point to want to kind of curve, but I'm going to make sure I get this point nice and sharp and come all the way down. All right, and so I'm, what I'm going to do is start in the very back on both sides. I'm going to start in the back here and come up and down and start in the back here and come around and come down. Okay, so I have this sewn. Now I made this turn and when I came down, I made sure that at this point right down here was at 3 8 because that's what I need to match up with the way that the pattern is designed. This part up here doesn't matter, but this part here does need to be 3 8 So now I'm going to um, take out this bulk, and like I said, I, since I have the lighter weight interfacing now, it's a lot easier. And I'm also going to um, make clips. Let's see here, making these clips almost to the stitching line. I'm not clipping this side yet. Don't clip this side. Just clip the inside part that we just stitched, the part that's going to go around your neck. All right, so now what I'm going to do is turn it, okay, and press it. So I'm trying to press the seam allowance towards the interfaced side, okay? And on this dress, the interfaced side is the side that's on the outside. That's the, the one that the rest of the world is going to see, that side. The one that is not interfaced is going to be on the inside of the dress on this pattern. It seems like they change it depending on who the designer is, but that's how it is here. So what I'm going to do now is come back and understitch this right along. This is, sorry. Reverse that. If this is the side the whole world is going to see, I want to understitch it actually on the side that is not interfaced. So I'm pushing the seam allowance, forget what I said before, towards the non-interfaced side, and I'm going to understitch, which means running a row of stitches just on this side of that interfacing um, for about an eighth of an inch in. So I'm going to go do that right now. Okay, so you can see where I've understitched it here, and on the inside I have my seams pressed this way, and I see if you can see, you can see the understitching right in there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half and press it. I'm going to poke out. I'm going to poke out this corner with my chopstick. I've got this metal chopstick I've had forever. And I like it because the tip is rounded, 
See, you know, the tip is rounded, so it's not going to poke through anything, but it's, it's just really nice for working a nice corner in. So anyhow, go ahead and press. Okay, so now I'm going to clip off these little parts that kind of poke out. So we don't need that interfering with our life. Ooh, excuse me. That could have been bad. All right, so now here's another thing I'm going to do differently. I am going to sew it the opposite way that we did before. Before we sewed the outside first, we sewed it like, well, to the outside first, like that. I'm sewing the inside this time, okay? And remembering that the part that is on the inside is the part without any interfacing. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and pin that on here. First, matching up these two notches on the back. On the pattern for your neckband, there's a little hole. That hole mark is where the uh, shoulder seam should go. And I actually erased that when I was ironing. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that little mark back on. And so you're gonna match up the backs, the shoulders, and the front, and I'll show you the front. Okay, so when you're going to get to where the front is, what I would do is, with a pen or some kind of a marker, this one, this one comes off, it races when I iron it, so I can draw all over the place. I'm just reinforcing that the seam line and the place that is 3 eighths of an inch up, okay? So I have a very clearly marked X. And I'm going to stick this pen right in the middle of that X, and this is very awkward because these two shapes are totally different. Actually, you know what? I need to base this. Let me go base to this facing onto here really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, and when I basted this, when I basted this, I did it like an eighth of an inch in, just very, very close to the top because I do not want that to show, to show. So anyway, back here, I'm lining up the top edge of this. Now it's going to look like it's sticking out a little bit. That's okay. It's this point where that pin's coming through that needs to be up against the fabric. Okay, so now that I have that place, I'm just going to kind of tuck my pin in there at a weird angle so that that is held. Now I have it just pinned at the very front at my shoulder and those two back pieces. So when I, and I'm not clipping this, and I am not, I'm not clipping this, and I'm not clipping this yet. But what I'm going to be doing is sewing this whole side here, and I'll put the camera at my machine, but both ways, I'm going to start it from the center back, work around one direction, and then to the center back and work around the other direction. All right, so I'm at the center back here, and I'm just going to go couple of stitches, back it up. Now on my machine, the side of my foot is a quarter inch. If I see a little shag hanging out, that means three eighths inch. That's how I gauge it. So I'm just going to kind of work a little at a time, get to my first notch, pull out that pin. Whenever I stop, I'm stopping with my needle down. And then I'm going to come and just kind of fuss with this next part. Okay? You want to try to match up the center of all of this first. If you just start here and start pushing it over, um, you're going to get more gap. But I'm just going to start the center here and hold it while I sew. And sewing it this way with just the layer of fabric, it's, it's actually easier than sewing it with the interfaced side. Get my little awl here and help me. Now there's actually no easy way to do this. Everything is going to be awkward, but I think that doing it this way is a little bit less awkward if that makes any difference. Okay, so I'm getting close to my, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting close to my shoulder seam here. Pull that pin out. So <clears throat> at the 3 8 inch allowance, it should be just the right amount of fabric. 
but there's going to be way too much out here and that's why I'm pushing it <clears throat> but that's why I push it along with my little pointy tool um, it just helps to work in the extra from out here while keeping this part smooth okay so I'm past the shoulder seam and now I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to take the middle of this big lump and kind of guide it towards the facing and with my pointer I'm trying to make sure that my seam my edges are still fairly level now here's the other thing while you're doing this if you get a little pucker here it's not going to get seen anyway. This is the inside. And this is the hard part. So it's not as, as disastrous as if this was on the outside. So that's another plus. At least it is to me. So again, I find about my midway point. Match up that side. And sew it in again. I'm just kind of like working it in, as you can see. Now when you get here to your front just open it up really wide and you're going to stitch all the way to that seam okay so I have it stitched open and I'm aiming for that X that I marked before back it up Pull it out. So this is one side. Let me lift you up here. So this is only one side. I haven't done the other side yet. But working it in this way, that's my massive, just ignore that spot. That was my big old grease pencil spot for matching up my shoulder seams. You know, as you do. Anyhow, but you can see how that's making a nice smooth band here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on this side because doing it this side it's upside down so this is underneath and it's it's actually easier with this underneath so I'm going to show you because doing it on this side the feed dogs can work with you. So the same thing get it started here back it up going up to my notch stomping with the needle down now I can stick my hand under here all right and I'm pulling I'm going to pull that bottom layer so that it matches up edgewise with the top layer okay so you can see here that's matched up so now if I hold this pretty tight here the feet dogs are going to work all that ease in for me the hardest part is making sure that the level is going to stay nice but we can do this so I'm holding the top a little bit tighter and actually it works so much easier um, on this side you might just want to do the whole thing that way but I digress all right let me get it up to the shoulder here and stop making sure we're not sewing over the last thing I want to do is sew over my other side of my collar band so double check that every now and then all right so I'm at the front and this front is very curvy we have a lot of curve to match up here so about halfway I'm going to hold it together and again I'm holding the top a little bit tighter so that um, all this extra over here the feed dogs can work in for me now again make sure when you're down here that it's open all the way and this part in the front where it curves that's the that's the most ease you're going to have to deal with is right here so I'm 
double checking to make sure I have everything level. I hope you can see that my hands aren't totally hogging the whole camera. <sighs> Okay, so I can see the top point on here. Where this intersection point is right there, that's where I am aiming for, okay? So I'm actually gonna pull this pin out and stick it back down from the top right there. And that's gonna hold it so I can aim right at it. And I'll pull it out at the last second and backstitch. Okay. Alrighty, so now this is the inside, and you can see it's a nice, pretty darn symmetrical, pretty smooth, no big puckers, no big problems band all the way around. And my seams come right up to the edge. So now what I need to do is now is the time that we're allowed to clip the inside, all right? So here's my stitch line. So I'm going to come all the way around. And you can see my stitches are actually fairly small. Um, and every inch or so, I'm going to put a clip. And you can see I'm coming probably up to about a sixteenth of an inch from there. I'm going to clip that all the way around because there's a lot of curve in this neckline. So go ahead and do that. That's going to make the neckline lay flatter. It's going to make it more comfortable. Just just don't skip this step, it'll be fine. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have it clipped all the way around now. Now, if you have a very fat facing here and you're worried about your bulk, um, this would be a good time to go ahead and grade some of that off. So I'm actually taking the top, this facing piece down a little bit. I'm taking it down to, oh, probably just over an eighth of an inch. And I'm just gonna do that for a couple um, inches because I don't, I'm not really too stressed about it on my little sample piece. But when you're, when you're doing your garment, you know, play it by ear. If your fabric is light enough that it's not going to be an issue, don't grade it. It's not necessary. But if you have thickness, like the, the fabric I used when I made this last time was a really nice linen. And it had a, a decent amount of body to it. And I had a much thicker interfacing here. I'm using a much lighter interfacing, which I would recommend, again, um, than I did with that dress. So I needed to grade it. So anyhow, at this point, what I need to do is iron it. So let me go back to the ironing board. All right, so I'm laying my piece down, trying to make it nice and flat-ish. And just coming back with my iron and making sure all of these pieces where I've clipped are wanting to go and lay straight up into where the band is going to be. Because where you've clipped it, they're going to kind of overlap so that they'll lay flatter. Okay, so I've got those all ironed in. So now we'll be working from the outside when we close this up, which is fabulous because then we can see exactly what we're doing. So I'm going to fold it, and it's painfully obvious where my stitch line is because I used a light colored thread. Okay, but when I fold this down, and I would not pre iron this, I would wait until you're actually at this stage to fold it under. I know the pattern wants you to do ahead of time. That just does not work out well, in my opinion. So I'm going to pin it down in a few places so that it just barely covers all of that stitching. So there I've done it in the center back. And I'm going to do it at the shoulder here. Okay, so you're getting to this point. So here's your tip. What I would do is, this is the part that's sticking out, and that's the little seam. Fold it straight in, okay? And then you can fold with that folded straight in all the way across. You can fold this side up. This side just tucks in. 
Okay, you're still going to have a little bump here, but it's not terrible. I don't think you can actually get around having nothing there without grading it to the point that it could be dangerous. So that's it now. So you have this point and this point. All you need to do then is tuck in the midpoint and stick a pin. And the same thing for the back. You have the shoulder and the center back pinned and you just need to tuck in that midpoint. Make sure it covers that stitching line. And cover it. So what we're going to do is um, from the right side so we can see exactly what we're doing top stitch this down. And uh, that's going to be pretty fast. So I've got this side done. Let me go ahead and pin up this side here. Again, at this corner. I'm opening it up, folding it in, okay, and then folding that up and tucking it in. Okay, so there's my, my corner there, and you can see it lines up. Oh, come on, focus for me. You can see it lines up really well. Now, when I'm going to do this, make sure, once again, you start in the center back. And it's actually more important at this step than the previous one. If the previous one you didn't start in the center back, it's not really a big deal. But for this one, it really is. Because when you try to start here, this is big and bulky, and it's right at the very edge. And your machine is really apt to give you trouble there. Maybe make a funky little nest egg here, you know, with all kinds of thread and stuff. And you don't want to have to do a, a back and forth tack in the very beginning, right on top of that big knob, right front and center in your dress. So I'm going to start it in the very back, go one direction, and then pull it and go the other. And again, I'm using a contrasting thread, so you're going to see it. If this was my um, garment, I would be using a red thread that would blend. So that now when I get to this point here, I'm not at the very beginning. I'm at the very end, and I can just go straight off. Now, if I want to... Be Woo! You see that? My needle just broke. Wow. So that's a another reason why. You don't want to do that, because that is a whole lot of thickness right there. Now I'll pull that out and just tie a knot with my um, my hands right here. Well, let me show you. So if anything, that is an amazingly good object lesson on why. Oh, here. All right. So instead of going back and forth here, which is, you know, obviously why. Now I did have a very thin needle in here. I had a nine because I was doing something earlier today. It was very light, and I should have changed it, but anyhow, I did not. I did not. My needle was too light. But anyway, um, I could just come back, you know, tie my knot, and then um, either clip it right here or thread it, <coughs> excuse me, thread it through the eye of a needle and slide it through. And I might, if I, if this was a real garment and not just a test piece, that's what I would do. I would thread these two through the eye of a needle and bury it inside of my, um, my garment in here somewhere. I'm just going to clip it because I don't need to. Put a better, stronger needle in here. That's, that is my fault for putting a nine lightweight, super sharp needle in back my big ol' size 11 and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so new needle in, ready to rock and roll again. So stopping with my needle down, making sure everything looks good, carrying on. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of guiding the edge here with the inside of this foot. Okay, just kind of pick a place that's a guideline for you. That's what works for me with doing a nice uh, close top stitch. I use that also as my guide for when I'm understitching.
Sometimes I see in these videos people with these super fast machines and they just go whizzing through everything really fast. And to me, a lot of sewing, it's not about how fast your machine goes and everything. It's how careful you can be to get it done right the first time because honestly, the amount of time that it's under the machine and actually stitching is pretty nominal, at least for a, a home sewer type person. Okay, getting down here to the edge, I'm just going to use my little sticky pointer thing to try to hold everything in place while I come up here. And hopefully I will not bust a needle. I have a stronger needle on. And I'm just going to go straight off the edge. I'm not going to backstitch this one. But when I um, pull it off, I'm going to do that thing where I tie a knot, hand tie a knot, and then tuck it in. So... Well, you have, you know, where you're backstitching to get it started in the back, but that's not a big deal, all right? But look, you're able to make a really nice neck band that's going to lay flat like you want, okay? And the inside is going to be like you want. Now, see how my top stitching is kind of off and on? Who cares? Who cares? Um, that's not going to be shown. It's not going to be seen. It doesn't have anything to do with how it's being held together on the inside, and that is just fine with me. And if I'm able to have a nice band, okay, that's laying exactly where I want and everything, having the underside a little bit off doesn't bother me one bit. So anyway... I hope that helps. I know that this pattern, it's a beautiful pattern, and I love wearing the dress. I feel fabulous when I wear that dress. But this could uh, be a big trouble for you. So I'm going to try to put this out really quick. Um, not a big, not a big elaborate video, but at least it's something. So I hope it helps you out. Thank you. Bye-bye.